Welcome back to the Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, it's Monday, and let's get into some Bitcoin price action. I want to give a big shout out to AM870 Radio for holding us up in the VIP section at uh, their event this weekend. A lot of fun. Got to meet Larry Elder um, and uh, shake hands with him. And really cool, down to earth guy. Um, and uh, yeah. Anyways, get getting it was interesting to see the political side of, you know, what he was up against in California. And um, anyways, you guys should check it out um, if you get a chance. So look, I wanted to zoom it in and then zoom it out as Bitcoin did have a bit of a pump up to seventy two thousand seven forty four. If you remember last week, um, we did talk about uh, the likelihood of that pump towards the $73,000 level. Um, and what else is important? I'm going to look at some liquidation levels. Um, I'm going to take a look at some of the economic data that's coming in. But just bringing this up on a shorter term time frame, one of the setups we teach uh, is when you get the silver cross on a 15 minute time frame for Bitcoin. Um, a test of that cross on declining volatility typically gets you a bounce of around, uh, I think it's 0.5 to uh, 1.5% on the high side. So let's just see where that would take us. Uh, so we already got the 1%, 1.5% on the high side is probably going to be that 618 fib which is what I'm kind of looking at uh, right now as what do we have declining volatility. We have not actually, I mean, would you consider this a test of the green 55? Yes. Was volatility declining at that moment? No, it was increasing. So signal is not in yet. So maybe one more swipe of the lows here down here at uh, 71,246. And then we give a push up to that 786, or excuse me, 618 fib coming in at 72,271. And that's for you shorter term time frame uh, traders out there. Um, let's zoom it out a little bit and just touch on a few of the economic points that are coming out this week. Uh, what do we have? March CPI inflation, CPI day on Wednesday, and the Fed meeting minutes on Wednesday. Then you got PPI on Thursday, jobless claims Thursday, and Michigan consumer sentiment data on Friday. A uh, total of eight Fed speaker events this week. Uh, will inflation data rise again this week? What do you guys think? I think inflation is ticking up here and the chances of another, you know, three rate hikes is just getting slimmer and slimmer as we speak. Um, so that being said, what else do I want to bring to our attention? Um, that was the economic calendar. Okay. Liquidation levels here on the shorter term. So you can see people have flipped from net short uh, to net long. And um, well, those long liquidations, the first big bubble down here at 70,887. Um, and actually, if we line that up with the 15 minute time frame, uh, yeah, I do believe if we start to close below this level, specifically call it 71,065, then we're going to make a run at that purple 200. And that is completely fine. Um, completely fine. And yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually be surprised if they throw it all the way down to this trend line at some point which would be down around 68,000 um, bucks. We did talk about this as well. And let's give a little round of applause because we, if you've been here this long, right? The Bitcoin having is 10 days away. Uh, Bitcoin having countdown is 10 days away. It seems like uh, nine days and 18 hours. And we're talking about uh, the current supply of the block reward at uh, 6.25 is going to be chopped in half to 3.125 to put that in perspective. Roughly 900 Bitcoin get mined every day. That'll bring it down to 450 a day. And with the ETF inflows continuing to, you know, uh, bolster the demand side of the market, I 
would not be surprised to see uh, Bitcoin push uh, for a little bit of a rally right here. And looking at this on a higher term time frame, I want to get rid of the good old fibs here and um, and then actually add a fib and get rid of this horizontal, make this a little cleaner here. And uh, I will touch back on what we spoke about last week that uh, those five red flags or five drives of bearish divergence to see if it was confirmed or not based on the weekly time frame. But a uh, quick little target here for Bitcoin as we mount an assault up at 80,468. And the next level up is going to be 92,000. Wow. So they're talking about a short squeeze, a bit of a short squeeze out there, as I think a lot of the hedge funds have been shorting Bitcoin. Um, if the short squeeze uh, does take place. And here's the other thing we talked about last week um, regarding this pennant formation, which uh, I, I, I would assume uh, we could call this a breakout officially. As long as volume continues to pour in and you see uh, volatility begin to tick up or regain the exponential, you got a daily cross to the upside. And usually it is the second cross that gets the bigger move. Um, so that is interesting. And volatility has come down, not all the way down. So here's what's to be aware of. Um, once again, cleaning this up just a little bit. Uh, if we get that double top, uh, let's look at it on a four hour here. Four hour did just close about three hours and 40 minutes ago. But if we get this higher high, lower high, and then a deviation back into the range, that would probably be your warning sign that, hey, uh, things are not going to be as rosy as we had suspected or hoped for. Um, going into the halving over the next nine days. So about a week away, halving is up. And um, I wish I did look at those liquidation levels before, uh, before I jumped on. Uh, needless to say, that's what's to be aware of. This does look like a bit of a breakout. And what do the breakouts typically do? They come back, once they break out, they come back and retest the breakout level, as long as we don't close back below, I would say, uh, back into the triangle, uh, into the ascending triangle, which I'll just draw this out a little bit again here. I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm gonna give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto, but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101 how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto trader's dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. So you got something like this. You just don't wanna see it break back in and hold in the triangle. It's okay if we come back and test it a couple times, but we really wanna see this thing start to pick back up. Uh, for our stokes are crossed up and we'll cross down below 71,288 on the next closure. So momentum, this is a trending signal. Like we're, we're, we're in the bullish control zone. We are, uh, flip flopping around and typically again, that, uh, second cross, maybe the third is going to get the bigger move. So that's something to be aware of. We're also in the bullish control zone when it comes to the RSI. All right, pulling it out a little bit further. How did the week close? Well, we did not close below last week's low. So could you call it a shooting star? Could you call it a hammer? Um, could you call it a continuation signal? Uh, to me, it looks like continuation um, when it comes to this type of let me delete that. So what you can see last week's price action uh, opened red, 
got bought back up and is continuing to the upside. We already took out last week's high, so that is typically a more bullish signal. Um, the question is, are they going to come down and grab a little bit more liquidity on the shorter term time frames? That's the question for me. Um, before throwing it up there, again, I do think it's most likely that they do sweep the highs and then we kind of judge it from there and watch the ETF inflows, just seeing if I can find something relatively quickly uh, regarding these ETF inflows. Anything standing out? Not from today, so I'll be back with you guys uh, for some information on that tomorrow. And yeah, again, things to be made aware of is, um, you know, again, this is the typical retail trader pattern, right? Where you've got an ascending triangle, all the retailers are watching it or, or pin it, whatever you want to call it. It's an easy triangle for anybody who's traded for any amount of time to put their eyes upon and say, okay, there's a triangle, right? And oh, now it's broken out to the upside. So the question is, are they going to grab that last bit of liquidity up here and then, you know, throw it back down? Or are they going to do something similar to what happened uh, with 2020 price action, um, which was before the having actually I'll, I'll pull up my BLX index. So uh, apparently this is the this is the meme. This is the meme before the 2020 having uh, that everybody's talking about right now. And are we doing something like this? I, I don't know if I can you call this a perfect. Um, what's it called? Uh, hi, not a hieroglyph, but a fractal. Is this a fractal of what's to come here? Well, let's see if it lines up. Does it look anything similar? That was coming into the green 55 and the yellow 21. And to me, I mean, it doesn't look very similar, honestly, um, from a daily time frame, from a daily time frame perspective, um, it does not fit the bill as what we don't see. And I mean, obviously this was a pretty, but I do think something like this could very well happen, right? We get the run up and then a, a nice little dump uh, I mean, again, this was the April 2020 halving. This is 12 months before the halving when the bull market starts. 30% correction already played out there. Um, but you're going to get an initial push higher. Retail FOMO's in. They're going to dump it on retail. And then it's going to get picked up. Um, and hopefully we have something like that going into, you know, 2025. Um, and again, our long-term target for Bitcoin is going to be up here, right? Using our FIB tool, every parabolic blow-off top has occurred at the uh, 4236 or higher, coming in at 241,000. Um, the last thing I'll bring up with you guys today, and I think this is uh, pretty interesting, uh, Bitcoin reduction cost. I'm going to favorite this. And I'm going to throw it in there. So this is the Bitcoin production cost chart. Uh, it shows the cost of production for Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin never trades below its production cost, which is this bottom line right here. Um, you can see we did scratch below it one time over here, um, one time over here. But uh, it, never in its history has it held below the production cost. You got one little time right here. Um, and so that is something to be aware of. And I saw some tweet today, you know, somebody was saying, look, you know, in 10 days or nine days and eight hours or 18 hours, Bitcoin's production cost is going to double from $30,000 to $60,000. So virtually that should be the next, uh, you know, massive higher low that Bitcoin, it should be the floor price for Bitcoin, you know, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but just go look back at it yourself. The production cost, the same thing for gold, you know, 
they, nobody's going to produce something at a loss, right? So it's got to stay above production costs for it to be profitable. That's it, guys. I'm going to end it there. And I hope you guys all have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.